I have two more LED bulbs to tear down. They're from my parents' house. They're not exactly dead. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But they're the crappy lighting science bulbs. They both failed at the same time. And if you remember, I did test one of these bulbs that failed before. And it had an open LED, probably a bond wire failure. So let's see what's going on here. Okay, I'm in the bathroom now. It's a room that I can make fairly dark in the daylight. Let's see what happens here. You see it? Flash? See it? Flickering? Let me unscrew it. And do anything. And unplug it. Well, it was before. When you unplugged it, it would actually flicker a little bit. But it's not totally dead. There's like some flickering with it. I'm going to guess something with the uh, regulator because the LEDs flickered a bit, telling me they're not completely open. Oh, this one's lighting up dimly. Unscrew it. And plug it once. A couple seconds after I unplug it, it makes like a uh, bright flash. Well, not a real bright flash, but it kind of flickers. So maybe these have different failures than the other one. Okay, I'm going to pop the top and see what's going on inside. Man, these are hard to get into. I need a big Clive vice of knowledge. In a lovely shade of pink. And we're in. Just like before, the base doesn't have anything, just the lead-in wires and the aluminum heat sink. Let's see if we can get a focus on the board here. I marked this board as two. It's the second one that I tested in the bathroom where the lights were dim, where it kind of came on dimly. But anyway, this is the lead-in wire connectors. Traces come around over here, goes through this fusible resistor. This is the full wave bridge. Across the full wave bridge is a 510K resistor. That prevents the leakage glowing of the LEDs, which I talked about in another video. Also, make sure this capacitor is discharged. And the rest of it is this current regulator circuit has these two 15 ohm resistors in parallel probably to get a specific value seven and a half ohms which sets the current and that flows through the series connected LEDs so I tested the LEDs I hooked up a 9 volt battery those LEDs have three die inside of them so they're the 9 volt type so yeah, I took a 9-volt battery, put a uh, 1K resistor in series, and went around and checked all of the LEDs. They have tabs on it so I can go around and check each one. See, that one's not lighting. Oops. It's kind of hard to look through the viewfinder here and do this, but... That one was lighting. This one is open. Nothing. I did that on both of them and uh, found LED open on this one as well. So, in the first case and in these two cases, it's dodgy LEDs that are causing open circuit causing them to fail maybe there's just a little bit of leakage causing glow in that one case but I think it's bond wire failure of the LEDs normally if the LEDs were stressed you'd see 
little dark spots, but I don't see that here. One more thing I'm going to check is make sure we're getting the proper current. You know, if these have failed and it let higher current through, it could also pop the weakest link, which could be a bond wire on one of the LEDs. So I'm going to make sure that's not the case. I don't think that's the case because one of these would run for a couple seconds at normal brightness and then go out. So I think as the LED heats up, it causes some sort of expansion and causes the bond wire to lose connection. Okay, I marked the LED with the problem and I connected it to line voltage. Of course, if you do this, you want to be careful. I put a bulb limiter in circuit just in case so things don't go bang. And if I shield the light here, you can see they are lighting up, including the bad one. But one of the LEDs, you know, there's three inside there. I can't get close enough, but... I can see three die, but this one only has two lighting up. And if it was a bad bond wire, I would think they all would light up. Hmm. Normally a bad LED would conduct without making light. I call it dark conducting because current passes through it and it doesn't make light. So, yeah, I'm not positive that it is a bond wire issue. So let's do some math here. I'm going to take my meter and uh, put it on the milliamp range and bypass that bad LED and see what happens. So there are 12 LEDs on this board. Inside each one is three die so there's 36 total times three it takes about three volts to light them up so that's 108 108 volts total and let's see they're rated 10 watts some of that's going to be lost in the regulator I'll just say 9 watts so 9 divided by 108 uh, 83 milliamps. That's what I figure. So let's see what the meter's going to say here. Turn off the overhead light so you can see it better. Of course, when this lights up, it's going to swamp everything out. See, if I short any other LED out, it just turns that one off because that's not the one with the problem. But when I short this one out, Pow! Need your swamp out. Um, 66.9, about 67 milliamps. So I was in the ballpark. So that thing was certainly the problem. Let me try the other board now. Okay, same deal. LEDs in a different place though on the board. This one doesn't light up or anything. And let me jump across that bad LED. If the board would not move out of the way here. There we go. Yep. Same exact current, 67. That tells me the regulator is doing its job. And see if I jump across any other LED, nothing happens. Because those aren't the problem. It's this one. Well, folks, I say we have a trend here. Three LEDs with the same failure. An LED goes open circuit. This board is from the other video. You know what they say, three times is a charm. I say that these LEDs are crappy and tend to go open. These lighting science bulbs are crap and I wouldn't recommend them. But hey, it was fun finding out what the problem is with these boards. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.